Why does it get, on average, colder and colder the higher you go? Behind me in the city of Melbourne, which is more or less at sea level, the air temperature is about 25 degrees Celsius. But up here, 600 metres above sea level, the air temperature is only 22 degrees Celsius. This graph shows the temperature for a six hour period of a place near where I live in the Melbourne suburbs and up in a place called Mount Dandenong. Though the two locations are only about 20 kilometres apart, it's usually, not always, but usually a few degrees cooler at the top of Mount Dandenong than it is in the Melbourne suburbs. The higher you go, the colder it gets on average. This may seem counterintuitive. It's easy to think that if you're higher up, you're closer to the sun, which means it should get warmer. But it doesn't. It gets colder. This is Africa's tallest mountain, the nearly 6,000 metre tall Mount Kilimanjaro. Though it's located only 3 degrees south of the equator, it's permanently covered in ice and snow. The surrounding plains are always hot though. In fact, all tall mountains around the world, even those near the otherwise hot equator, are always cold. What's going on? Whenever you hear that the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Celsius or whatever, that figure is telling you the air temperature, not the temperature of the ground or the ocean or anything like that. To measure air temperature, you need a thermometer of some sort, of course, and you have to place the thermometer in the shade. In this simple experiment, I held one thermometer in the sun and the other in the shade for about three minutes. The thermometer in the sun was not only surrounded by warm air, it was being hit directly by the sun's rays. As a result, it got hotter than the one in the shade. This one's at 29 degrees Celsius, and this one's at only 24 degrees Celsius. A thermometer in the shade gives a much better indication of air temperature. So why is the air temperature typically much colder the higher you go? The reason is that the sun doesn't really warm the air directly. Most of the sunlight passes straight through the air without getting absorbed. When light hits an object, it can reflect off it, leaving the object unchanged, or pass through it, which also leaves the object unchanged, or be absorbed by it. When the light energy is absorbed, the object gets hotter. Quite often, a combination of all these things happens at the same time. Only a small percentage of the sunlight that hits the Earth is absorbed by the air, since most sunlight passes straight through the air. But a large percentage is absorbed by the ground. So the ground heats up when the sunlight strikes it, and then the ground heats the air that is in direct contact with it. It's not just the ground, of course. It could be water, plants, buildings, or whatever. So air that is in contact with the warm ground heats up much more than air that is far away from the ground. Since most of the world's land isn't very high above sea level, and the ocean is at sea level, the air is warmer near the surface and it's cooler higher up. Air near a mountain may warm up a little, but it's generally surrounded by cooler air far from the ground, so the higher you go, the colder it gets. The always freezing cold peak of Mount Everest is about 9 kilometres above sea level. Commercial jets typically fly at an altitude of about 11 kilometres. The air temperature up there, outside the plane, is typically about minus 50 degrees Celsius. Now since the air is not really heated much directly by the sun, but mostly by contact with the surface of the earth, then the air will get hotter if the surface gets hotter. The air over land, solid ground, will usually warm up more during the day than air over the ocean. It turns out that land heats up more than ocean during the day, even if an equal amount of sunlight strikes them. Why is that? Let's take a look. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from Shedding Light on the Sun and Earth, Episode 5, Land and Ocean. The Shedding Light on the Sun and Earth series introduces students to the basics of climate science. In Episode 5, Land and Ocean, we examine how the nature of water affects local and global climate patterns. Why does Uluru in Central Australia get so much hotter than Fraser Island during the summer, but so much colder than Fraser Island in the winter, even though they are both at the same latitude? Why do Northern Hemisphere winters get so much colder than Southern Hemisphere winters? Why do winds blowing over land get hotter than winds blowing over the ocean? And why does land get hotter than water, even when they both receive the same amount of sunlight? These questions and many more are answered in this program. Like all of our programs, Land and Ocean comes with an outstanding student activity sheet. 
Visit the Liaquis Educational Media website to download the sheet and to find out how you can watch the whole program. You'll also discover all of the other programs in the Shedding Light series. They are revolutionising science education. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.